Well, if I had to pick one word to describe the waiver wire for week seven, I would say confusing with a question mark. Maybe intriguing. How about you guys? How would you describe it? You'll be able to get what you need, but there's nothing that's going to make you go crazy with your fab or spend that number one waiver claim. Really? I, mean, we have, I don't think we have so. I don't... Key running back injuries. I love I the waiver wire this week. I think it's going to be great. Uh, okay. Well, I have a feeling we've got a difference of opinion on the players that are on the waiver wire. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's why it's so intriguing. And I think I might be somewhere in the middle because I, I see these great options, but I could see where all of them go wrong, basically. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. Plus, two exciting... Mm, that's not the right word. Two intriguing uh, fantasy games from last night, at least uh, with the Cardinals, Cowboys, and the Bills Chiefs. This episode is sponsored by Express. Express is all new and all about you with a fresh assortment of casual, versatile, and super comfortable styles. Find out more about Express and their exclusive offer later in the show. All right, before we get to the waiver wire priorities... The Bills should have gone for two, right? Are people aware of this? Which point? After they scored in the fourth quarter? Yes. They they scored. Yes, right. mm-hmm. They scored to make it 23-16 with about six minutes left. You go for two. If you make it, it's a five-point game, and then you're only down eight when the Chiefs go kick a field goal. If you miss, it's a seven-point game, which is basically the same as being a six-point game at that point. They should have gone for two. Agreed. Y'all should have been flipping out about it on Twitter. Okay. Well, at least I got it. But if that's your big takeaway from that game, I don't know what you're paying attention to. (laughs) That's Uh, true. Well, that's my big non-fantasy takeaway from that game. Okay, fair enough. Josh Josh Allen is uh, in the Halloween spirit. He is a pumpkin. Buy or sell. Oh, buy all the Josh Allen you can get. Yeah. No, he just has to He's he's about to go nuts this week. Look who he's playing. He's got the Jets, yep. (laughs) Playing the Jets, but you, uh, he might turn into a pumpkin after this week. I, I, I'll take it week by week with him. He just hasn't thrown did. the ball well two straight weeks. Uh, he has not thrown the ball well two straight weeks. You know, defenses so. are flooding the zone against him. They're they're daring him to be accurate. Well, he's not doing it. No. <laughs> so, the truth, truth or dare. The truth is, he has not been accurate. Okay, top waiver wire priorities. Okay, Jamie, you're the excited one. What are we doing here with the waiver wire? I was, I was. Pleasantly shocked to see what Justin Jackson's uh, roster percentage is at 59%. So if he's out there, that's an easy one to go get. And then it's fly, eagle, fly. Uh, You get a lot of eagles that could be really good this week. Carson Wentz has been a very good fantasy quarterback, and now he's starting to get some better matchups uh, from basically now until week 13. So even without Zach Ertz and Miles Sanders, uh, hopefully it's just a one-week absence for Sanders. But he's going to get Dallas Goddard back this week. That's the expectation. He's going to get Deshaun Jackson back this week. And he's going to have uh, an opportunity to maybe throw the ball with a little bit more uh, ease of not getting pummeled like he has been the last couple of weeks. So he's in a great spot. Boston Scott now gets an opportunity to be the starter. He beat up on the Giants last year in two games. Hopefully he takes advantage of this opportunity. And then you got Travis Fulgham, who I was surprised was not added in more leagues. But he's available. His roster percentage is 51%. So he's been playing great. Uh, it's a big week for the Eagles. Yeah, I challenged Heath to write some columns with making a bunch of Eagles puns. Uh, I don't know that he did. Jamie, you should do the same thing. You should change your waiver wire. Like, make every subheading, you know, like an Eagles song. Okay. Uh, I'll be yeah, sure go, not to do that, but sure. It's good go to for it. <laughs> See what you can do. Uh, I'm, hopefully, it's going to be life in the fast lane with these guys. <laughs> oh, you went to it's not like easy. the most obvious one. <laughs> well, I already Why don't did. you just take it easy? I, I used that one on Fantasy Football Today in five on Sunday night. Oh, um, okay. I said, you know, I was I was gonna pick up Boston Scott in this one league, but I'm like one in five, so I'm already gone. You know that. that kind of, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so Dallas Goddard is going to play this way. They have the Thursday game against the Giants. That you're thinking Goddard's back? That's the reports. I mean, obviously we have to see him get out there, but uh, you know he's he's past the three week threshold of when he had to sit out, and it kind of makes sense that he's gonna rush back now that Zach Ertz is not there. So. Uh, if he plays, he's a must-start tight end and, you know, could be a uh, potential difference maker for you if Ertz is out three to four weeks. So I love the setup for him. Yeah, 41% roster, Dallas Goddard. Am I crazy to think that he might be the best waiver wire option this week? I he's would probably there. put him behind Jackson, yep. just given the position, but he's right there for sure. 
All right, Dave, why are you not as excited about the waiver wires? Gene? I don't know if there's anybody on here that's going to be a league winner for you, but there's definitely pieces that can help you out over the next one, two, three weeks. So I, I don't mean to like poo poo it and say there's nothing out there. Don't even waste your time. You know, go do something else on Tuesday night. But I don't think that there's a like a number one spend your fab guy. Spend all your fab, really? I should say. Well, no, I would. Uh, I would on Goddard and Jackson. Um, yeah, Dave, how would you prioritize like Jackson? Jackson should be first. Mm -hmm. And then I, I honestly, I, I feel like there are enough tight ends out there where you don't, you could, you should prioritize Goddard ahead of all the tight ends, but I don't believe that you've got to go, you know, 20% fab on him when there's guys like Ferkser, if you need a tight end this week, Darren, well, Fell, might play. Yeah, well, okay. So like the even better not to go ahead and spend fab on him either. If John who plays, that would be great and Ferkser would be nothing. Fells look great to me. And I think he's yeah, but Aikens be a big part of their offense. Yeah, I think Aikens is done. I think Fells is a better part, a better fit for that. I offense. disagree. I don't think Aikens is done by any stretch. Okay. Well, we'll see. I would rather have Fells at this point. Then God. And then there's still and no, 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 no. Then Ferkser and but then Aikens. Really, the point was okay. to say over Aikens. Yeah, I, I, I don't Trey Burton with... and Irv Smith, too. Just real quick, Trey Burton and Irv Smith aren't playing this week. Absolutely worth stashing at tight end. Sure, but, you know, for the people that are desperate and need wins, I mean, those aren't going to be very high-prioritized guys, especially Irv Smith, who had a, I big agree. Game, had a great game. It's uh, what you need. I, I, think, I think Fells is, is better than Aikens at this point, but I don't think that Aikens – I don't think that Fells is going to be as good as he's been if Aikens is there because Aikens has been their preferred pass-catching tight end. Yeah. yeah, the last two weeks, I wonder if Fells has kind of proven that he can do it Maybe. too. Maybe. And he's 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 humongous. He's six seven, and he he's not exactly fast, but he runs pretty well for a guy who's six seven and two hundred and seventy pounds. Yeah, but right, there have been so few targets for Fells before last week. Ferkser yeah. had a huge game as well. And actually, there's one league I have Mark Andrews in. I it's the only league that so far I've made any waiver claims in. And I put in four bids for tight ends because Rob Gronkowski is available. Austin Hooper's available. And the two guys, Fells and Ferks are, are available. So I think you're going to have a lot of success finding tight ends on the waiver wire this week. Uh, you know, that you might have, some, you might have a Noah fan or a Jared cook available as yep. well. Uh, these guys are, you know, it's mostly shallow leagues, but they could be out there. Uh, so that's, that's a good position. DST, I think is really good this week. Hey, guess who's number one. The Bills? <laughs> no. The Eagles. Oh, as in terms of waiver wire, but I'd take the Bills over the Eagles. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. And the Bills are like, look, they just play the Chiefs. They haven't been good this year. But they're playing the Jets this week. They're 61% rostered, 65% rostered. So, which is probably way too high. I don't know why they were rostered that many leagues. Because they're, they're playing the Jets this week. People were looking I, ahead. I hope I hope so. So um hey, is really it confirmed that Goddard's gonna come back and play, by the way? It is not confirmed. That's just the reports that are coming out of Philadelphia. What I read is that he's eligible to come back, but he still might need another couple of weeks. So it's something to monitor. I, I want to talk real quickly, not really quickly, but about these running backs, right? So Justin Jackson has a, not only, you know, a possibility to be the starter. He, pro, he We are thinking, correct me if I'm wrong, we're thinking he's going to be the starter for the Chargers. Like the starter in their last game and, and was their best player, too, in right. the backfield. So. He gets the Jaguars this week. They're horrible. Five, fifth most fantasy points to running backs. Gets the Broncos next week. They're actually number one against running backs. Then it's the Raiders, Dolphins, Jets. Not hard. I mean, that's a good stretch there, at least on paper. And then who knows? Eckler might be back. But but this has always been a two-back system. And if you roster Josh Kelly before when Austin Eckler was healthy, there's no reason not to roster Justin Jackson at this point. Uh, Boston Scott, he might have one or two games as the feature back for the... Philadelphia Eagles. Does he have a good matchup? It's debatable. It's good enough. The Giants have been a lot better against the run in their last four games. No running back has a carry of even 15 yards, but they give up fantasy points. Then the really tricky one, I think, is Gio Bernard, guys, because yep. haven't heard anything about Joe Mixon, but Giovanni Bernard in his last three seasons, he's played four games without Joe Mixon. He has scored 12, 10, 14, and 20 non-PPR points. 18, 13, 19, and 24 PPR points. If you just go back to 2017, he's played six games with at least double digits and touches. And in those six games, 12 or more PPR points. So 
my question is, if you knew Joe Mixon was going to miss some time, even if it was just one game, would he be number one? Uh, the way that I wrote it was you can make a case that he's the best running back to add this week if Mixon's going to miss significant time. Um, it doesn't seem that's going to be the case, but you never know if there's something that shows up on an x-ray. And Zach Taylor, the only thing that I saw, Adam, was Zach Taylor said they were waiting for more results on Monday or Tuesday. So we should get an yep. answer today, at least hopefully before waivers run. I think you can make a case that even if Mixon is out for this week, that Jackson is still better. Justin Jackson is still better. But Mixon, I'm sorry, uh, Bernard would vault ahead of Boston Scott for me, mm -hmm. just given the fact that, uh, you know, Boston Scott had a, already a one-game audition as the guy in week one behind this offensive line and was miserable. Now they got punched in the face against that Washington defensive front. The Giants don't have that same level of talent. So I think Boston Scott would fare better than what the – why are you laughing? Because yeah, they have a very good it's run. Not, it's not what Washington threw at them in week one. Not on the edges, but in terms of their tackles, they I think they are going to win that. But I, I think it, that's why I'm saying it's a little scary because that offensive line is so bad. Sure, but as bad as the offensive line has been, and, and this obviously speaks to Miles Sanders' talent, he's overcome that. And so you hope that Boston Scott, in actually a, a favorable game script for Philadelphia for the first time in what seems like the entire season, that he could have an opportunity. You just have to worry about what Corey Clement's going to do as the second guy there. So I, I would I would take Bernard over Scott if we find out that Joe Mixon is going to be out. But we also just don't know. You know, the report is Sanders is going to miss one to two weeks. Their buy is in week nine. So we could be looking at maybe they hold out Sanders for those two games. And then you have a two-game window of Boston Scott being the lead rusher for the Eagles. So it's tricky. It, it's definitely tricky. You want to keep an eye on the Joe Mixon reports before you make your waiver moves if we find out something, uh, hopefully Tuesday night. Okay, and then what about the 49er situation? Because Jamichael Hasty just straight up played ahead of... Well, they basically benched Jarek McKinnon. He just wasn't doing anything. And truth be told, since uh, since the like long run against the Jets, basically whenever Mostert's been hurt, McKinnon scored a lot of fantasy points. It's been great, but he hasn't really run the ball that well, I guess. He hasn't been that efficient. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. So Hasty is un is unrostered, if that's a word, 0%. Um, what's your interest level on him against the Patriots? It's not high. Number one, it's the Patriots. And I know that we just saw Philip Lindsay compile a nice game against them, but he's not going to be their only back. Jeff Wilson could get in the mix. And the radio broadcast during the 49ers game on Sunday said that Tevin Coleman's close. Tevin Coleman's actually close to the top of my list this week. He's 23% rostered. And if you've got IR spots, you can stash him in the IR spot until he's activated. And he might not get activated. If he's ready to go, he might not get activated until Saturday. Can literally carry him all week long. Yeah, I, I don't know what changed penalty. between the broadcast Sunday night and Kyle Shanahan on Monday, but Shanahan called Coleman a long shot to return this week. Okay, so, well, that's probably um, a little bit more. I, I think you just want to keep an eye on Coleman. I think it's a good call to stash Coleman. Yeah, uh, because he could return during the window of Mostert being out. But Wilson was inactive in that game against the Rams. And so if Wilson is out again and it's McKinnon and Hasty, then Hasty's opportunity looks much, much better. And I think you're right, Dave, that you don't want to trust anybody against the Patriots. But if there is a team to trust, it's this 49ers team because they just run on everybody. And so um, McKinnon would be the lead back. He'd be the one that you want to trust clearly based on the two game sample size that we have of most are missing with the knee injury. But the fact that they trusted hasty to play over McKinnon, I don't know if it was just, Hey, we're trying to kill the clock and, and you're the more physical of the two guys. Uh, but the fact that they gave him the nine carries in the second half after most was injured is, is a little telling. So he's not the biggest of priorities. Like I've gone back and forth between him and the Michael P Ryan, just based on what the long-term appeal could be. But in the short term, if you tell me that Wilson's out again, Coleman's not back, and Mostert's on IR, then Hasty is definitely in the mix with these other guys, but on the bottom of those other guys behind Scott and Bernard. Mm -hmm. And if you did happen to see Jarek McKinnon on your waiver wire, he's 82% rostered. Should be the number one running back to add if he's available. Even Shanahan, Shanahan also said he hopes that Wilson can return to practice on Wednesday. Right. So that's the other thing to factor in. But you know, with Wilson being inactive, it's a good sign for Hasty. So Hasty is more of like a speed back. McKinnon is probably in between that and what Wilson is, which is like a hammer between the tackles. If all three of them are active and there's no Tevin Coleman, then I would imagine that it's going to be like a frustrating mix of all three. Yeah, I, I would still trust McKinnon in a big way because we saw that already. 
He would be my favorite of the three. Yes. Okay. He'd be my favorite of any running back available. McKinnon would be? With, without a doubt. We, we've, we've seen enough in the two games that Mostert was out. How much? Ahead of Boston be. Scott this week. He, yeah, ahead of ja- Jackson's the best running back to add. And then ahead of Scott and ahead of Bernard for sure. Okay. All right. But yeah. he's, a, he's rostered already in 80% of the right. league. Yeah. So it's not yeah. like you can find him very easily. All right. A couple more questions here. And then we'll get to Fab. Where's Travis Fulgham in this list? You know, how does he compare to the running backs? He's behind Jackson. You, know, you can make a case that he should be behind Bernard and, and Scott, but just given what he's shown you, even with the potential of Jackson and um, Jeffrey coming back soon, Jackson's expected to play on Thursday. We'll find out about Jeffrey, but I mean, he's, he's legit, you know, and, and I was a little hesitant to trust him against Baltimore, just given the Ravens defense, but, um, the way that Carson Wentz is relying on him, the targets that have been there for him, the ability that he's shown as a big play threat and, and a physical presence, it's hard to ignore that. And so I know Jalen Rager is eventually going to return and Jeffrey and Jackson as well, but uh, for at least a one week window against the Giants, I'll trust Fulgham as a low end starter. So uh, good for a streaming option if you're still looking at him as that, but I think he could have some long term appeal as well. 30% target share in his last two games, Travis Fulgham. Last player I want to mention real quick here. Any interest in Antonio Brown, who is eligible in week nine? I mean, he still has to be signed. So is that a no? It's a no for now. I mean, if you're, you're talking about, you know, some dynasty leagues where he's available, some deeper leagues, deeper leagues, then yep. you can pick him up. But you got to have, like, you know, um, I'm sure you're going to look at him in our, in our IDP league, which has 27 rosters. <laughs> but you can't add him now. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the type of league you're looking to add in Antonio Brown. All right, guys, Um, I want to ask you about your fab bids. First, I want to tell you about Express. Please, everyone, go to express.com. Check out the selection. Men's and women's clothing, jeans, T-shirts, button-downs, sweaters, cologne, masks. they got so much stuff, an endless list of things to buy on express.com and an awesome offer. Here it is. If you want $25 off your $50 purchase, text FOOTBALL to 397-737. You'll get 25 bucks off your $50 purchase. Text football to 397-737. This is the new express, people. They emphasize comfort, fit, and versatility. They've got perfect options for any type of occasion. If you just want to be casual around the house, they got t-shirts, you know? If you're going out to dinner with friends, they got button downs, polos, all that. If you're going to work, if you're getting ready for the cold weather, they got sweaters and hoodies and, and great stuff like that. Check out the Lux Comfort Knits. Really nice stuff with soft fabric. So it feels like you're wearing your favorite sweats, but looks great. This is uh, something they're featuring. So definitely a section on there that you want to check out on express.com. And looking great is important, right? You, you look great. You feel great. You feel more confident. You get a little pep in your step. You get things done. You walk out the door feeling good about yourself, ready to kind of dominate when you're dressed well. So Express helps you do that, and it's very cost-effective at the same time. You're not paying a lot for this stuff. Unbelievable bargains. And even a bigger bargain, you can save 25 bucks on your $50 purchase. You send a text to 397-737, text FOOTBALL. Again, text FOOTBALL to 397-737. So all that money you save on Express, you can put into your FAB budget, guys. How much FAB are we talking for our favorites this week? I mean, if you could find Jackson, that's at least 20%. If you could find Goddard and he's playing this week, that's in the 20% range. Uh, the receivers, they're all going to be around 10 to 15% of the top guys, meaning Travis Fulgham, yeah. Tim Patrick, Christian Kirk, uh, Cole Beasley at this point, you got to buy in. Um, even A.J. Green, if you want to go that route, you know, given the fact the way he played last week. So they're all going to be helpful players to you. Um, and then at quarterback, you know, if you need somebody, Carson Wentz, uh, I, would, I would look at his upcoming schedule and his recent performances, and he's in that – category as well so you know it it depends what you need you know if you need somebody that's going to help you and you're and you're you know flailing at this point with your record uh you may have to spend you know 50 percent on a guy like jackson if he's out there or goddard if you need a tight end or even you know 30 to 40 percent on one of these wide receivers just to make sure you get them i think boston scott's going to be popular too i don't know if i buy into spending 30 40 percent of fab on him but i would imagine that it's going to take over 20 percent to get boston scott onto your roster because People are going to see Miles Sanders is out. This is the next guy up, and uh, they're they're going to spend to get him. Where are you going to rank him? Where are you going to rank Boston Scott, Justin Jackson this week? 
Jackson's in the uh, top 20 running backs for me, and uh, Scott is on the cusp of a starter. Jackson is – it's basically the same thing for me. I've got Jackson inside the top 24. Okay. And Fulgham, is he a top 24 receiver this week, top 30? Uh, definitely top 30. He's yeah, uh, no. like around 25. A lot of good receivers. This week. He's higher than that for me this week, but there are a lot of really good receivers. He's in my top 24. It seems like you guys expect the Eagles to do quite well against the Giants. I don't know why we would think that. I think they'll... <laughs> I think they'll win. They'll I, keep it competitive. I, I think they'll win too. I think it's going to be their defense that probably helps them out the most, but Wentz is making plays. He's doing a good job. Fulgham's making plays. Uh, they're they're getting Carson, by. Carson Wentz is 20th per game right now. You you look at his fantasy points. I know, but his last four games, he's been better. Because he has rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So that's That that's, was part of his success when he was 100% healthy in 2017. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, it's a little... like He's got four rushing touchdowns this year, so it's a little unsustainable. Sure. He does throw the ball a ton. Uh, I get it, but he has not had a good year. He's had a really oh, bad he's, year. He's been, I mean, he's been sacked 25 times in six games. You know I mean? Right. That's a big part of it. His offensive line is a disaster, but... I mean, yes, he's got uh, four rushing touchdowns, and three of those have come in the in the four game stretch where he's been good. But that's also been two on the road against San Francisco and Pittsburgh, and then one at home against Baltimore. I mean, that's you know a pretty murderer's row type of schedule. And I know the 49ers defense isn't the same, but you know you're still talking about just such a banged up Eagles offense. And I get it, like you know, to say buy into Carson Wentz when he just lost Zach Ertz and Miles Sanders is a little difficult to do. But if he does get Goddard back, he's getting Deshaun Jackson back. And Boston Scott, as a pass catcher, if they use him the right way, can still be successful to help Wentz. And maybe the loss of Sanders does keep him in the 40-plus attempt range. So he's not a slam-dunk, must-start fantasy quarterback this week. But, I mean, just look about look look at what you saw in week um, in week six, where all, there, it was a bad week for quarterbacks. You know, first bad week we really had in a long time, just, you know, poor quarterback play from the entire group of, you know, guys letting you down. And now you're losing Lamar Jackson. You still don't have Dak Prescott. If you've been relying on Ryan Fitzpatrick, you don't have him. So those are the guys on a bye. And even Kirk Cousins, you know, for what it's worth. And so now you look at it as, like, I, in, in our uh, podcast league, we lost Dak Prescott, myself and Todd Rohn, so I share a team with. We lost Dak, Dak, we lost Dak Prescott. Uh, we picked up Andy Dalton and Carson Wentz. We played Dalton because I thought he'd have a, a decent game against the Cardinals. I wasn't overly excited, but I liked him better than Wentz going against the Ravens. We're cutting Andy Dalton after this week, and we're just going to ride Wentz for the next four games when he's going to face the Giants, the Cowboys, the Giants, the Browns, the Seahawks before he gets to the Packers in week 13, and we'll see what that looks like for him. He's going to be a top 12 fantasy quarterback in those games. Okay. I Look, I do not think the Giants have a good defense, but they are seventh against quarterbacks. There's been one quarterback who scored 20 points against them. It was back in week one. They've done – they've, like – Cooper Cup, okay, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, Juju Smith-Schuster, Amari Cooper, none of them even had 70 yards. It's been a little weird. They've been better than you'd expect. Bradbury's played really well. He has been. He has played great. Um, I don't think they have a good defense. I, I could see the Eagles crushing them, but... Uh, it's also it's also they got Ben in his first game back after being off for a year. Yeah, and he had played a great... Dak, game. who got hurt in the game. Yes. So there's some circumstances that surround some of these numbers for them. Yes, and they played Trubisky, Mullins, Goff, Kyle Allen, other than that. Um, all right, but it's just, I only bring it up because the Eagles are basically the theme of the waiver wire. So, uh, you know, just want to get your sense on how you feel about the matchup. Uh, you know, I, it seems... You I mean, look, I, 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 I do think it's, it's a little fluky how Wentz has gotten his numbers because of the, the defenses that he's played and the fact that he's been able to get those numbers against those teams. But... If you say any quarterback is throwing 40 plus times, there's a chance that he's going to have success. And with the fact that he's running and and just, if you take away the touchdowns, I mean, three of those four games, he's over 37 rushing yards. So if he's giving you three points as a floor, which is a little hard to be, you know, sustainable, but it's kind of what he's done. Then Mm -hmm. you factor that on top of what his passing numbers have been. They're, they're leaning on him. And this is desperation time for the Eagles. You know, we had uh, Jason Lacafora report that the Eagles are going to be buyers at the trade deadline. And so they already made one trade uh, this week. And so we'll see if they're going to be aggressive, adding some offensive line help, maybe some receiver help. You know, we don't know when Rager is exactly going to come back and how healthy Jeffrey will be once he does return. 
So if they're going to add offensive pieces, Wentz could be even more attractive once we get past November, I think, 3rd or 4th, whatever the trade deadline is. Okay. It's not It's not a, a great waiver wire week for quarterbacks, correct? Well, I mean, Carr has been great. Yeah, but you're not starting against the Bucks, are you? Uh, no, but, you know, if you're looking, you know, past that. And then Garoppolo, he's played two healthy games. Yeah. And 22 or more fantasy points in those two games, you but know, so you, you, huh? He's got the Patriots. You don't have, you don't have that game where you've got Ryan Fitzpatrick against the right. Jets. You don't have that game yes. with that beautiful matchup and that right. player who's available. You could, you could be looking at, it's very similar to McKinnon. You could be looking at somebody who dropped Herbert going into their bye week. Uh, he gets the Jaguars. You know, he can have an awesome game this week against Jacksonville and continue to play at the level that he's been playing at. But yes, you're right. There's no. I have to pick up this guy, and he's a must-start player. Wentz would be the closest to that for me. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's go through a few things here. We'll do the news and notes as well. Uh, first of all, our win of the day was Ricky almost. Ricky won by .2 fantasy points, 120.72 to 120.7. Oh, so he won by .02 fantasy points, actually. And it was all thanks to that long Kenyon Drake touchdown run at the end. Huge win for Ricky. Congratulations. Tweet of the day came from Quinton Clark. Quinton said, do any of the FFT guys actually play any serious football? I found that to be a hilarious notion. No, we don't, unless Thanksgiving games count. Birthday of the day goes to our good friend, <laughs> Richard Punch, out in Australia. Today is your birthday. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Dave, am I forgetting any big birthdays? From over the weekend? Yeah, yeah last couple of days. And Monday? Uh, no. No? Uh, oh, just kidding. It's Jamie's. <laughs> Post birthday. Yesterday was Jamie's birthday. Happy birthday, big man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Reggie Jackson, 44. Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Good birthday. It was a great birthday. Two football games. Uh, got to spend some time with the family. A lot of work, but, you know, anytime you get to spend time with the kids and uh, watch some football, it's always a good day. All right. And your birthday present will be a Twitch appearance tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. Everybody come hang out with us. Twitch.com slash FF today will answer your waiver wire questions. Also, the UEFA Champions League is back with every match streaming on CBS All Access. Messi, Lewandowski, Neymar, icons of today, but the next generation is not far behind. Match day one of the group stage is here this week, and you don't want to miss the drama of the world's most prestigious tournament combined with the world-class coverage of CBS Sports. Go to CBS.com. That's CBS.com slash UCL to start your free trial today. The UEFA Champions League, there's nothing like it. All right, Christian McCaffrey could be back this week, next week, or the following week, <laughs> according to Matt Rule. Very helpful. Joe Mixon, it is helpful if you're a Mike Davis fantasy manager. Is it? I mean, it, Yeah. Well, you might. I'm assuming McCaffrey's not going to play this week. I traded, I traded Mike Davis uh, in one league two weeks ago. And with the thought of that, it was going to be one more week of using Mike Davis. And so you just continue to use him. I mean, it's frustrating if you're the Christian McCaffrey manager, if you don't have him handcuffed. But if you have Mike Davis, you're thrilled. Uh, Zach Ertz, three to four weeks. Miles Sanders, maybe one or two games. Jalen Hurts could see more playing time for the Eagles, by the way. I'm not sure. I guess that doesn't affect your Carson Wentz love. But keep They've played mind. together quite a bit. Yeah. He may be their best running back. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson expected to play. Alshon Jeffrey could play, so they're getting healthy at the right time in a crucial battle for the NFC. Um, Cowboys, Cowboys still in first place with two wins. Uh, Mark Ingram has a chance to play in Week 8. They got to buy this week. Ingram could be back in Week 8. J.K. Dobbins is about 80-ish 80, percent, I think. Maybe 70 to 80. Gus Edwards would be an interesting stash. Obviously yeah. not a priority, but somebody that, you know, maybe your third turn on the waiver wire bids could could put in. I Just hope it's, happens. you know, I, I said this, uh, um, I wish I had made it my start of the week instead of just my bold prediction, but I said that this would be the DeAndre Swift week um, coming off their bye week that, you know, this is the game to feature him against Jacksonville. And I hope it's the same thing for Baltimore. Like, you, you know, Mark Ingram and Adam, I, I didn't, send this in the notes to you, but Mark Ingram should be on the drop list. Um, he's at 96%. So if you want to add that to your notes, um, it, it, it's time. I mean, Ingram's banged up and has just not looked the same. You got to start to feature JK Dobbins. Like Gus, Gus Edwards is a nice player and he's a good backup. But he's if not as good as Dobbins. Get to the next level as a team. And Mark Ingram was at that level last year and he was fantastic, but he's older and you have a young what I would hope would be a 
improvement. And we saw it with Miles Sanders last year. I hope to see it continuing for De- DeAndre Swift. And I hope that this is the week that they just give everything to J.K. Dobbins and they come up there by week and use the Ingram excuse as the reason why they're going to start to use him more. Somehow he's still available in 22% of leagues. Dobbins. I mean, I get it. He hasn't no, been good I, in, in redraft leagues. It's, it's hard to continue. But to we know ne- there was never a suggestion to drop him or let him go from us. We knew that there were, I had it. I had it. I had it the last couple of weeks as a suggestion, just based on the, the, okay. the if you had to make yeah. a move, we don't know that there's going to be an opportunity. We hope there's going to right. be. Right. It's, it's, well, it's, it's, it certainly helps if there's no Mark Ingram. Well, that, so yeah. just hearing well, that he's got a chance to play in week eight, who knows? Who had more carries last week? Edwards. Edwards. Yeah. Yeah, right. right. And this was, this but was he always, wasn't good with them. This was always the fear, but none of them were good. You know, this was always the fear of, you know, banking on J.K. Dobbins as the direct backup that they liked Gus Edwards a lot. And so, you know, you saw it and you're like, okay, Ingram goes down. Okay. This is now the chance for, for Dobbins to take over. But you have a two week window to just throw everything as the playbook at J.K. Dobbins and say, if you fail, we have we have Edwards, <laughs> but go go out and, and Ingram. And, and well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just if Ingram's out. Well, but Ingram's Ingram. not going to be gone for a long time. Go out and lead the way. A game. All so. right, guys. Let me let me uh, get through the notes here. Um, Raheem Mostert likely going on IR, so that means at least three games. It's a bad day for San Francisco. Their center Ben Garland's going on IR with a calf strain. He's their backup center. Trent bad Williams. Season. He's out for the season. No, bad season for oh, them. Bad with season. Oh, bad season. Oh, horrible. I mean, San Francisco and Philadelphia are fighting for who's going to be the, the, the most banged up team for the year. Yeah, even the Chargers are laughing at him. <laughs> Trent Williams, their left tackle sprained his ankle. Their safety, Jaquiski Tart, left with a groin injury. Meanwhile, a couple of Giants notes, Darius Slayton, who, he was listed as limited. He's dealing with a foot injury. Uh, coming on a short week here against Philadelphia, you might want to, if you're banking on starting him, you might want to think twice. Sterling Shepard could be a game-time decision. By the way, like, well, do you guys think Slayton is a start this week? Yeah, he, he plays. plays. Yeah. Leighton Van Der Esch played. Um, poetic justice. I played Jamie's team in the IDP league, and I kicked Jamie's ass. It was wonderful. Wow. And, uh, yes. <laughs> and only two and a half points from Leighton Van Der Esch, but he still came somebody. back. Shake off the rust. How about I had a 30-point lead going into uh, Monday with Edward Zilaire, and Edward Zilaire pops off, and I ended up tying Jamie. Yep. In our uh, fantasy football oh. today telethon league, let's see if there's a stat correction coming. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's see. It could go my way too. Good. How about no, that? I wasn't saying it for me. I'm saying. Oh, okay. How about a different website that doesn't have any stats and I can't see my scores and I'm very annoyed about that. Uh, how about in that same league? I am undefeated and they gave me a loss last week because uh, they gave, they gave my opponent 0. 0.6 of a point and they gave me a zero. But my team is smashing in that league. <laughs> they haven't had. Oh, they haven't had. Right, what ha- what? Oh, okay. there's another there's another site. We shouldn't mention their name, but there's another site that hasn't had their live scoring working for two weeks. So All right. they'll get it together. They will. Yeah. And they posted a note. They're explaining their problems. So it's mm-hmm. uh, you know, hopefully they get it fixed because it's, it's a good site. I like using it. Um, but in any event, uh, my team is undefeated, but they gave me a loss because of the, the scoring glitch and the opponent had uh, for whatever reason, they got a point. <laughs> I got nothing. And so I looked at the standings. I'm like, how do I have a loss? That's funny. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, Carolina had a positive COVID test. Taylor Lewan, Tennessee left tackle. He's out for the season. That's so, big. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And the schedule stinks. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow and what that Sell means. Sell high on Derrick Henry. Sell high. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. He gets 25 carries a game. He got 200. And he's I mean, been if, awesome. you, if you can turn Derrick Henry into Christian McCaffrey and a receiver right now, you wouldn't do it? Okay. okay. I would do I, that, of that's course. Fine, but- Sell high. Uh, there are so get. few sell high scenarios, though, because you're still talking about a first round player. I mean, there are a handful I mean, of running backs where he, you could try. You're selling not, you're not him. Henry is one of them. You're not giving him away for nothing. Don't right. do that. Sell right. high. You're but, talking about like five players. OK, would you take Zeke after the two? Would you, would would you, you in PPR league, league, would you take would you take Chris Carson and Michael Thomas for Derrick Henry right now? Of course. But no one's going to yeah, give that, you Chris Carson and Michael Thomas. I'm not. I'm not. OK. We, I, we, Jamie, we, can, we can keep doing the sliding scale. scale. However, however you want to do this. All I'm saying is if you can get a haul for Derrick Henry, you should try and sell him now because the line is bad. The schedule's getting worse and he could, he could struggle. I mean, it's just a potential out there for him. Yeah. I, fine. Yeah. He had really, he had scored touchdowns, but he hadn't been so great right. last week, but I would have taken Carson and Michael Thomas for Henry before Taylor Lewan's injury, you know, but mm-hmm. uh, the question right now, I'm sorry, we really got to get to the waiver wire, but Zeke, Coming off a two fumble game or Henry? I'll take Zeke still. 
Same. Okay. Uh, John Smith. Eddie Katz is in the game. Yes, exactly. John Smith is going to be questionable with the ankle injury. Corey Davis is off the reserve COVID list. Zach Martin, Dallas guard. Zach Martin, you want to talk about a bad line? Jeez. Yeah. Concussion in the first quarter. Saints are going to continue to play in the Superdome for the foreseeable future. All right. Sorry. It's been too long. Now we've, we've brought a, a bunch of names out, but let's do some more. The top waiver wire priorities at each position. Dave, who are your top quarterback priorities this week? It's Wentz, if you can find him, and Carr after that. And if you can't find him, and Herbert should be in there, but, I mean, he's too highly rostered. It would take a wing and a prayer for to find him on the waiver wire. Wentz and Carr are the top two names. Okay, there's also, like, Gardner Minshew might be available. He's 77%. Um, how about Teddy Bridgewater at New Orleans, 68% rostered? How do you feel about him? He's not bad. He's not bad. But, you know, it's, uh, it's a matter of, you know, the, the Saints are going to be healthy. And, you know, Bridgewater struggled in his first, you know, tough matchup in a few weeks. So he's, he's in the low end starting mix. And again, it's a good week for quarterbacks, at least on paper. So I don't know if you really want to buy into Bridgewater, but I wouldn't necessarily run away from him either. I would take him ahead of Garoppolo this week. Like, yeah. let's just say Carr and Wentz are already rostered. And those are the two quarterbacks you're staring at. I'd rather have Teddy. Okay. Uh, running backs. So obviously we have Justin Jackson with Boston Scott. We have Giovanni Bernard. Who else? Jamie, give me a few more names. I mean, Michael P. Ryan, he played more snaps than Frank Gore. It's the Jets, so it's not going to be very attractive. But, you know, Adam Gase, as long as he's the head coach, he did say that they're going to start to, you know, continue to give him more work. So I don't know if this was, uh, hey, Frank Gore, it's your last game in Miami. Go out and, you know, be the, be the lead guy. But they're, they're a team that's going nowhere. you got to start to see what he has to offer. And the fact that he played 51% of the snaps to 35% for Frank Gore is a sign that he's going to get more work moving forward. And he looked okay. And McKissick. Yeah, that, that's the name I was going to mention, is that he's starting to play well, especially in PPR. Those catches are racking up. And I don't see... I, I, I hate to say this, but I think that he and Gibson are going to be a, a one-two punch, both in the, in the ground game and the passing game for Washington moving forward. McKissick tied his season high and carries with eight, and he's got three straight games of at least, at least six catches for 43 yards and at least three, at least six targets in each of the last three games. So, um, and he played more than Gibson last week too. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. How do you feel about this with McKissick? Cause you know, he looks, he's 32% rostered. He looks like an absolute must have in PPR leagues. Yes. But, 11, but he's averaging but, 11 PPR points per game in his last three. Right. It's very solid. However, Dallas gives up the fewest receiving yards to running backs. That's his matchup this week. Uh, that's even like the Browns got nothing. Chase Edmonds, nothing. Malcolm Brown, I think, is the most receiving yards for any running back. It was like 32 in week one. And then he's got a bye in week eight. Does that matter for J.D. McKissick? It's, it's weird to think of the Cowboys as a bad matchup for anyone, but for whatever reason, this is not something running backs yeah. are not catching passes. I, I think as long as you keep expectations realistic with McKissick and think that he's going to get you 10 or 11 PPR points, which is basically where he's been living at, you'll be fine. Yeah, his high is 14. You know, So we're not talking about a guy that's a must-start player. He's a good but, bye week replacement in PPR leagues. Yeah, I don't want to start him this week. He's at best a flex, but he's somebody you want to have on your roster. They're not getting receiving help anytime soon. You know, Antonio Gandy Golden got hurt. Uh, we still don't know when Steven Sims is going to be back. You know, Logan Thomas had a nice game, but prior to that, he's been a disappointment. So he's basically been their number two receiver. I got to tell you, like, this is so, this is why I think PPR is kind of wild and you should play half PPR. I think it's reasonable to ask. J.D. McKissick, and I had to do this in one league, J.D. McKissick or Daryl Henderson, because Henderson is probably going to have one or two catches. Like, J.D. McKissick has a five-point start on him, basically, in PPR leagues. And if Henderson sure. doesn't score, and that's crazy. Like, Henderson should be much more valuable. Than J.D. McKissick <laughs> is exactly what Darren Sproles used to be. Like, he would never have, like, a lot of monster games. When he did, it was amazing. But for the most part, you knew what you were getting from Darren Sproles. You'd get four to five catches. You'd get 30 to 40 yards. And he'd be a nice floor flex play for you. And, you right. know, he's in that conversation with James White. He's in the conversation with what Tariq Cohen used to be when he was healthy. That's the type of player J.D. McKissick is. Okay, wide receivers. So we know Fulgham. Who else, Dave? Tim Patrick would be second. Christian Kirk, third. We haven't talked about Keelan Cole yet. But is he the best wide receiver in Jacksonville? And he's available in more than two-thirds of CBS Sports Leagues? No. And Preston Williams know. is on a bye. If Devontae Parker's out for a while, that's your new number one receiver in Miami. Deshaun Jackson. Uh, that's that's my list. I could be Mike missing. Mike Williams? Mike Williams? Mike Williams would be a good one as well. 
where would he be? So you Tim, so it's Fulgham, Tim Patrick, Fulgham, Patrick, Kirk. and Kirk are, are for sure the top three. I I hesitate a little bit to put Keelan Cole ahead of Mike Williams, but I think I would do it. And Mike Williams would be behind Keelan Cole. Mike Preston Williams gets Preston the Jaguars this week. Give me all the Mike Williams I could potentially handle. And Keelan Keenan Allen is still not a hundred percent. At least that's the uh, well. If you're the Mike Williams fantasy manager, you're hoping Keenan Allen is not a hundred percent. He left last game for them with back spasms. He's expected to return, but that could be a big opportunity for Mike Williams as we saw against the Saints. But he's only had, right. But he's only had one good game, right. and it was with Keenan Allen. He's also been uh, banged up, so uh, you know this is, was his first big game with Justin Herbert, and so I'm excited about what the upside could be moving forward. Good job on the Tim Patrick call, Jamie, from a few weeks ago. Wish yeah, I had... you were fighting about, about that one. <laughs> no, I wish I had listened. I mean, still think Noah Fant could throw a wrench in things, but hundred uh, percent, yes. You gotta, you certainly have to buy into the production at this point. And he, he was Gilmore was on him a good portion of the game, so they gave him the respect of of the the best corner. All right, tight end, uh, Jamie. Who are our top tight end priorities? If Dallas Goddard plays, he's a must play this week. He should be on your roster regardless if he doesn't play this week, because if Zach Ertz is out three to four weeks, you saw what Goddard was able to do when Ertz was healthy. And if Ertz is going to miss time, then we could see big production for him coming ahead. So I want Dallas Goddard first and foremost. And then it's kind of a mixed bag. You know, you look at what Anthony Ferkser could be if there's no John U. Smith, but it's a tough matchup against the Steelers. You look at what Austin Hooper has done. I've been hesitant to buy into it, but it's just week in, week out. He's continuing to get targets. It hasn't been a lot of blow up games, but you have to buy into what the opportunities have been there for him. Uh, Dave said it. I totally agree. If you're looking ahead, you look at Trey Burton and maybe Irv Smith, but Burton more so just based on what his role has been for the Colts. And then Darren Fells, you know, if uh, if he's going to continue to be this type of player, you should roster him. But I do think that Jordan Higgins coming back is going to be a problem. And what about Gronkowski? Where would he measure up here? Gronk would be behind Goddard ahead of Hooper. Okay. Uh, DSTs, Dave, I, lo- I love it this week. I love DST this week. What are we looking at? Bills, if they're out there, they're available in 35% of leagues. They play the Jets. That's a slam dunk. Eagles against the Giants. Giants against the Eagles, although they're already rostered in 71% of leagues, so forget that. Uh, Saints. The Giants are? Oh, 40%. I, I, I know. Wow. Yeah, the Look, Saints. Saints are pretty good. Who do you like? I like the Chargers. Uh, I think they're getting Melvin Ingram back this week. No, but I, these are the teams. Uh, Buffalo and Philadelphia are the are the headliners. Dallas, I th- I like Dallas more yesterday before I watched them play. Right, I can't. They're I can't playing Washington. Anymore. Anybody uh, playing Washington is a, it's just it's a step above the Jets, barely. Yeah, I look, I thought the last couple of weeks have been pretty lean in terms of streaming DSTs. I think you're going to find this week to be much more favorable. And Jamie, who are the kickers to pick up? Uh, Michael Badgley gets the Jaguars. He's 30% rostered. Uh, Ryan Suckup gets the Raiders. He's 54%. And Brandon McManus has been great for the last two games for the Broncos. He gets the Chiefs. All right. Good stuff. Um, Let's do these games from Monday night real quick here. Kansas City 26, Buffalo 17. It was an interesting strategy for the Bills. It kind of worked. They took away the deep ball, it seemed, and just said, go ahead, run the ball. And they forced out field goals. Mm Mm-hmm. What, what happened in week one? The Texans did the exact Texans. same thing in week one. Yeah, and they forced field goals. The Bills, they were in the game. Their offense stunk, though. All right, so what's a bigger... Because the Chiefs almost did the exact same thing. What's a bigger takeaway? That Clyde edwards helaire had this massive game of 161 yards and looked great, or that Josh Allen has struggled a couple games in a row now? Oh, it's edwards helaire And the fact that Andy Reid came out after the game and said he's our starter, you know, that's an encouraging sign. And, and I thought this was going to be the case, that they would feature edwards helaire just with the notion of, you know, you, I, I'm, I'm going to guess that Andy Reid is uh, on the same parade, page as Brett Veach, but I, I think that they really like Edward Solaire, and I don't think they want to necessarily ruin what his confidence could be and what his upside could be as the lead rusher for the Chiefs. So the fact that they went out and gave him this much work, um, 30 total touches, is just fantastic. So he's not going to be this type of guy with Le'Veon Bell on the roster, but this is still a very, very good sign that he's still going to be their guy. And you could trust him as at least a number two running back, even with Le'Veon Bell expected to play in week seven. Just reaffirms what I was saying toward the end of last week. When, when this went down, Bell is there to replace the other guys. Yep. He's not there to replace Edward Z. Now, if Edward Z. ends up stinking, then he could do that for them. But I don't think that's the plan. I think Edward Z. is like Andy Reid said, starter. Okay. Two, Two quick notes on on that, though. Um, we still don't know if he's the goal line back. He had another touchdown call back two weeks in a row. 
And they had that fourth and one, that key fourth and one late in the game. And it was Daryl Williams who was in, who got the carry and scored the touchdown. Uh, in terms of the Bills, Devin's there's so much. See, I, I, yeah, I think I, I think the Josh Allen side, I think that is the more concerning issue. The fact that it's two straight games where defenses are just flooding back and not pressuring him and trying to contain him with four guys from running around and he's having a hard time. He's, he's facing the most blitz heavy deep. defensive coordinator maybe in the history of the game this week. So I don't think they're going to have the same plan by the Jets with Greg Williams just throwing guys Sure, down. so this is a get-right game for him, and I don't think anybody should be concerned this week, but moving forward, the schedule isn't going to be easy for him. Uh, really no, but... Look okay, but... I mean, yeah. he's got New England in Week 8. Even if he had played well in these games, we'd be a little bit concerned about him facing the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Get Seattle in week nine. That's an easy matchup based on what we've seen from that defense. Arizona, I don't buy that the fact that they're a top 10 defense against opposing quarterbacks because they really haven't faced a lot of great guys in that regard. And then you get past their bye week and it's going to be the same type of thing. You know, good matchups, some tough ones. Chargers, 49ers, Steelers, Broncos, Patriots. Yeah, I mean, he's a sell high candidate after this game for sure. So after he beats up on the Jets, you can try and flip him. <laughs> Okay. I, I mean, what happened to he's going to win MVP? He's like, that's what I'm saying. You know, th there was, a, it was a rainy day yesterday and Troy Aikman at least seemed to think that some of his errant throws were a product of the wet ball. Troy, but, Troy Aikman loves to talk about how he struggles throwing a wet ball. He, he does, says it he does every time there's a rainy yeah, game. Yeah, it does. Like, he does. <laughs> uh, Devin Singletary played 75% of the snaps, but this team. I'm worried about him. Really struggles. They just should be. Yeah. I'm worried about him. I'm worried about the fact that Zach Moss came back. This was the hopefully shake the rust off game. Zach Moss, if he's available, he's at 72%. I would pick him up because he could inject some life into this Buffalo run game because he was going to be in a shared situation with Singletary. And their offensive line has not played well in terms of run blocking. So that's part of it. But Singletary just has not gotten the job done. And you might wonder if Sean McDermott and Brian Dable decide to give Zach Moss a little bit of a longer leash. Well, but Moss also hasn't been amazing when he's played. No, and but, but this was this was one of the team. other teams. This was one of the other teams rumored to be in on Le'Veon Bell. For so sure. who knows? They could make a move to add a different running back at the trade deadline, something like that, to try and inject life, like you said, into the run game. They need it because Singletary hasn't gotten the job done, and I don't know if Moss will if given the chance. Okay, and I think tomorrow we should probably talk about Tyree Kill because he's just not getting a lot of targets. He has one game with more than six targets. He had three in this game. It was just a weird game, you know, just a lot of running. But still, it's been a weird year for him. The touchdowns have saved him. All right, Arizona 38, Dallas 10. Michael Gallup dropped a touchdown. Are we dropping Michael Gallup? Yes. I wouldn't. You are? Yes. All There's right. so many receivers available. So many receivers available. I'm not starting Michael Gallup, but I still would rather have him on my bench than on the waiver wire. He's really, he's either like the worst player or the best by low. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I, because he, going into the game, going into the week, he led the NFL in routes run. How do you be this bad on this passing offense, which is mostly head Dak, and lead the NFL in routes run? It's, an, it's incredible. Well, There's it starts with targets. Very little time for Andy Dalton to throw the ball down the field with this offensive line. And with all these other players that are getting targets, it's just no reason to trust Michael Gallup when you can pick up any of these receivers that are available on waivers. There's so many better options on waivers. Who boosted his stock more last night? Kenyon Drake or Clyde edwards Elair? Drake, because he'd been so miserable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They both did. Edward Hilaire saved that one was his better than the saved, other. Saved his status. Drake boosted his status. Yeah, you know we had said it, Dave. Like Drake had to stop dancing and just be physical, be a downhill runner, and he and won. he's done it. It's he true. Won. Yep. Well, one having a nice beat writers, run late was <laughs> was pretty helpful for one him. One of too. the Cardinals beat writers said it was the most north and south he's run all season. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, good, good for him. That's oh, we saw. We started to see him do that more last week. Yeah, did yeah, it on the, healthy. the drive that he had with the touchdown. I don't know if it's that. I just think that the Cardinals realize that they can't win with him running to the edges or in the passing game. How much do you trust the Cowboys passing game? Because you just look at the fantasy points. Oh, CeeDee Lamb is solid. Mari Cooper, 79 yards on touchdown. They threw 54 passes. They might have to throw a lot, but that's that's a lot. That's a lot for a lot. <laughs> um, Andy Dalton stinks. He stunk. Yeah. How much do you trust? The line stunk even more. How much do you trust the guys? How much do you trust Cooper, Lamb? Are they still must-starts? They're still fringe starters. Mm -hmm. 
It's the best way to put it. And I got a couple of tweets asking me, all right, what can I get for Amari Cooper in a trade? And I answered back, you could probably get a decent amount for him if you can find somebody who didn't watch the game and won't watch the game before you consummate the trade of Amari Cooper before doing so. Because it's, it's hard to be excited about any Cowboys player now after watching what we saw. Would you take Amari Cooper or Cooper Cup? Uh, I might still rather have Amari Cooper. Cooper Cup. Cup is just... Uh, don't yeah. like what I'm seeing from Cup. Okay, well, we have got to talk more about the waiver wire, and we also have to talk about Amazon Prime. Are you an Amazon Prime member? Did you know that you can watch Thursday Night Football live on Prime Video, the future of football? You can catch all the action on any device almost anywhere in the world. You can choose your favorite announcer, including Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, or Bucky Brooks and Daniel Jeremiah from Move the Sticks, or Chris Long and Carrie Champion from NFL Next. Get next-gen stats, watch in-game replays on demand, all within Prime Video's X-Ray. Next-gen stats are real-time stats powered by AWS, so no more waiting around. You can access the current stats at any time. It's great for fantasy if you need to check how you guys are doing. Uh, it's the ideal way to stay up to speed. In-game, on-demand replays are accessible on your remote, on Fire TV, or by turning your mobile device sideways. So if you're a streamer or simply want the most custom way of watching Thursday Night Football, tune in live every Thursday. Uh, coverage begins at 7 p.m. Kickoff is at 8.20 p.m. Eastern on Prime Video. Also available on Fox and NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast subject to change. And Thursday Night Football is presented by Bud Light Platinum. All right, guys. Time got away from me a little bit here, so I'll probably just ask you to be a little quicker. Um, Evan Ingram on the drop meter Let's start with the drop meter Evan Ingram, 0 to 10. 2. Uh, 8. <laughs> that equals 10. Yeah, okay, um, so difference of opinion there. Another good matchup, but that hasn't meant much so far. How about Robert Tanyan at Houston? Seven. Four. How about Miko Hardman? Six. Seven. Michael Gallup? Six. Five. T.Y. Hilton? Eight. Jarvis Landry? Nine. Wow. Jamie, what's your number on Landry? Six. Jerry Judy. Uh, Eight. Five. Damian Harris. Zero. Three. Ah, oh, finally, someone we were not dropping. Okay, waiver wires. <laughs> I'm going to give you some names. Let's start with quarterback. How do you feel about Joe Burrow if he is available? 78%, so probably not, but he gets Cleveland this week. He'd he be, be ahead of Bridgewater and Garoppolo for me. He'd be ahead of Carr for this week. He would be behind Carr long term. What about Minshew? Uh, I would go for this week. It would be Wentz, Minshew, Burrow, Carr. You're and starting... I would go. Oh, sorry. No, no, yeah. You'd start Carr over Garoppolo this week. Me, I would yes. Start Carr over Garoppolo this week. Both have tough matchups. For me, it's Wentz, Carr, Minshew, Burrow, Bridgewater, Garoppolo. Did you know the Patriots, and I didn't know this until this morning, they allow the fifth fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks. This is Garoppolo's matchup, but they actually are, they allow the fourth most passing yards per attempt. No team sees fewer pass attempts than the Patriots, but they're really bad per attempt so far. And that's exactly what the 49ers are good at. You guys have talked a lot about the Patriots as like a tough matchup, and I'm just not sure they have a very good defense. I don't think they have a bad defense. But they like they have lost so much from a year ago. And when have they had a great defensive performance? And maybe I'm just forgetting. They were good. Well, the Raiders. The I mean, they're the, they're the one game that have they're the one team that's kind of stifled Carr in this recent stretch. Yeah, he scored 19 points. Right. Uh, you know, and and in the other three games, he's been 24 or more points. They did a good job containing Josh Jacobs. They did obviously a great job in taking away Darren Waller. So they can take away your best. They can asset. do that. They can do that. So we'll Will see if they're able to take away the 49ers ground game or George Kittle. Wilson, Carr, and Mahomes all had passer ratings of 113.6 or better against the Patriots, uh, for what that's worth. If you suck at quarterback and you need help, you can look at Daniel Jones, Drew Locke against the Chiefs, Nick Foles at the Rams. Both those guys are more long-term than short-term because their schedules start to get really, really favorable in the next coming weeks. So it's more deeper leagues. Which Locke and Foles? Yes, and you know the hope for Locke would be getting Fant back 
But uh, if you get past this week for both of them, sorry, I just need to get to where it is. Um, I got their schedule. Uh, Locke after this gets the Chargers in week eight, Atlanta in week nine. So those are favorable matchups for him, at least on paper. We'll see about the Chargers once they get healthy. But those two matchups have been good for quarterbacks. And then for Foles, after he gets past the Rams, he gets New Orleans. Again, on paper, has been good. Tennessee and Minnesota before buying week 11. So deep league stash type of quarterback. Yeah. Last thing on Foles, the Bears are 5-1. and one. They have one of the best defenses in football, and they throw about 40 times a game. It's pretty weird. That's like fifth most in the NFL, fifth or sixth most. Um, any interest in Kyle Allen or Baker Mayfield? Mayfield, if he's healthy, yes. I didn't put him on because of the health status, but he's in that conversation as a low-end starter, but he doesn't get you more than 18 points. And does Andy Dalton get you more than 18 points against Washington? I hope so, but he's not going to No be one's going to feel confident starting him, he's even against drop, Washington. He's a drop candidate. Right. All right, running back. So the guys that would be, well, it'd be great if they were available. DeAndre Swift, Jarek McKinnon, Adrian Peterson, James White, and Zach Moss, who Jamie just talked about. J.K. Dobbins is 78% rostered. You could look at him. Uh, we've obviously spent a lot of time on this position. Justin Jackson, Boston Scott, Giovanni Bernard, J.D. McKissick, L- McKissick LaMichael Pirine, Jamichael Hasty, Gus Edwards, Frank Gore, Devontae Booker had eight touches a couple of weeks ago in their most recent game. Um, I don't think we need to talk about more running backs. Tevin Coleman is a decent stash. He's 23% rostered. He's a great stash if you've got IR spots. And Corey Clement in deeper leagues too. Right. I was going to mention him. Um, Royce Freeman, if Melvin Gordon doesn't play, he got nine touches. Gordon is expected to play though. Okay. And yeah, your handcuffs that matter. Tony Pollard, Jamal Williams, Brian Hill, Benny Snell. Mm -hmm. There you go. Got to have Snell if you've got Connor. Um, check to see if these guys are available. Brandon Cooks, Debo Samuel, T. Higgins, Henry Ruggs. Hey, I mean, Higgins, if he's available, 74% rostered. Him and I, Cooks. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would, I feel like, would you, if Hooks, uh, sorry, Hooks, Hooks, Higgins or Cooks were available, would they be ahead of everyone else? Of course. And that's one, those are two guys you'd gladly drop Gallup for. No, I mean, everyone else, uh, Justin Jackson, Gio Bernard, et cetera. I mean, Jackson's yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit different just because of the position that he plays, but you can make an argument for it, sure. Yeah, right, sure. So, like, if you need the running back, then you'll go get Jackson. But if you don't, if you're not desperate for one, then those receivers would absolutely take uh, preference. Yeah. All right. It's Travis Fulgham, Tim Patrick are one and two. Christian Kirk's pretty interesting. He's getting, you know, <laughs> Two, three targets last night. He had an 80-yard touchdown catch, but it's three good games in a row, and he's facing Seattle. Most yeah. fantasy points to wide receiver. So, uh, Slayton or Kirk this week? Kirk. I think you've got... I, I kind of like Kirk better. He's, he's the vertical component to this offense. They needed something because they weren't really throwing it downfield very much, and he's absolutely giving it to them, and this is a game where they're going to need to put up a lot of points. It's going to be a fun game. Yes. Against Seattle because they, they started not that be game, a lot of defense. They started that game with two deep shots to Andy Isabella, and he didn't know where he was going, and, right. and Murray missed him on one. Uh, and Murray was so frustrated with it. <laughs> he didn't see Isabella the rest of the game, essentially. So Kirk is uh Kirk is coming around. And you know, let's give credit to our buddy Ben Gretsch, who um was all over Christian Kirk prior to the season, and he got off to a slow start with the targets, but uh, you might want to be a little bit concerned about DeAndre Hopkins mm-hmm. if this continues for Christian Kirk because the targets are starting to be a little bit more evened out. Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley uh, is pretty consistent here. Here are his yards in six games, 58, 70, 100, 32, 53, 45. But he usually has about five catches. So he's like kind of the McKissick of wide receivers. It's 11 straight, 11 or more PPR points in five straight games. And he had four catches for 58 yards in the first game against the Jets. The Jets are just a mess right now. So um, Beasley's a good option. A- I, AJ- I feel like Beasley especially is useful when you know the Bills are going to have to throw a lot. Like he, I think he's like all reliable oh, for game. Josh Allen. Yeah, it's going to end up, it may, it may be if they can't run against the Jets, then it could be every game. They better be able to run against the Jets. The Jets yeah, seriously. A, a nose tackle. I mean, they're uh, AJ Green, Mike Williams, Keelan Cole. How would you guys prioritize them? In that order, I go Cole Green Williams. 
Brandon Ayuk, Deshaun Jackson, Demarcus Robinson. How would you prioritize them? That's Jamie's order. In that order. Give me the order again. Ayuk. The names again. Okay. Ayuk, Deshaun, Demarcus Robinson. I don't want Demarcus Robinson on my team. Ayuk would be first. Why? Why? Like he's such a. He feels like such a drop. I'm sorry. What? Ayuk. Like. He's, Ayuk feels like a drop. Yeah, I know he had a. He had 12 yards at a. You asked me to rank those three guys and who well, I'd rather have on my team. Right. I'm not saying that he should be at the top of the list for anybody. Uh, why is he on the list, Jamie? The list. <laughs> well, I mean, San Francisco is going to continue to. Uh, I, I, I just look at the games that Jimmy Garoppolo has been healthy, and I think they're going to end up having to throw more than we expect. Uh, okay, and Deshaun Jackson or Alshon Jeffrey? Who would you take a shot on? Deshaun. At this point, Deshaun. He could be back first. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Rashad Perryman with the Bills. Adam Humphreys has been, you know, decent. I'd like Humphreys more if, if Corey Davis were still not playing, but he was taken off the reserve COVID list. He's expected back. I like Humphreys if John Smith doesn't play. Speaking of which, though, on Corey Davis, I mean, should we be adding Corey Davis? You can. Okay, what about Marvin Jones at Atlanta? Droppable. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. And Preston Williams going into a bye, 51% rostered. Uh, tight ends, we've, we've pretty much covered. You could see Noah Fant. You could see Hayden Hurst, Jared Cook, Rob Gronkowski on your waiver wire. If not, you know, there's Dallas Goddard, there's Austin Hooper, there's Ferkser, there's Fells, there's the two stash plays in Trey Burton and Herb Smith. Logan Thomas could be okay this week against Dallas. But what about Eric Ebron against Tennessee, which has allowed a touchdown to a tight end in four or five games, 65% rostered? I'm sure you're going to replace him with Goddard if Goddard plays this week. But would you drop Ebron for Hooper, Ferkser, or Fells? Yep. Ferks are uh, assuming that Smith is out. I, I'm, yeah. I can't trust Eric Ebron. And I would not start Fells over Ebron if Aiken plays. Right. Okay. And then the DSTs, Eagles, Chargers, um, Bill, Bills, if they're available, Eagles, Chargers, Cowboys, Browns? Any interest? Browns at Bengals? Nah. They're okay. They'll beat up on Burrow. They'll sack him. Saints against Pan- Panthers? They're, they're, okay. they're toward the bottom. Okay, so the Eagles seem pretty good this week. And uh, Michael Badgley, Ryan Suckup, Brandon McManus. Cool. Good show, guys. Well done. Really proud of you. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, All right, we're out of here. We'll talk to you on Tuesday night on Twitch, twitch.com slash FF Today. Wednesday with our super fun show. We'll play a game. Fantasy Feud or something like that. It'll be great. We'll talk to you then later. <laughs>